Hey friends, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Duns. Today we read the book of Acts chapter 2. Um, and remember, Acts is like the sequel to Luke. So Luke is the gospel of when Jesus was here on earth and it goes all the way up until Jesus' death, burial, resurrection. And Acts picks up on the other side of this resurrection. And I think it's really cool that we have these people who witnessed Jesus on earth, those 40 days that he um, hung out with them. And Jesus just picks up right where he left off of preaching and teaching and telling them how it is to live in this world um, as followers of Christ and as part of the upside down kingdom. How do we figure this out living in this world that's telling us one thing when Jesus and the Holy Spirit, as we're going to find today, tells us to live in a different way. And so I think probably my very favorite thing about um, what we're reading here is because Jesus has not yet returned, this is as much to us as it is these people who, these apostles who are following <laughs> Jesus at this point in their lives. Um, we're still on this, in this in-between time. And today in chapter two, when we get the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that we are going to read about uh, working in the lives and through the lives of these people in the next few chapters, um, he's the same Holy Spirit that lives in us. And so this is super applicable to us. As I read, I get fired up because this is my God that I read about. I love the song that we sing at church, Saying God, because it blows my mind that the God that I read about every day with the most epic, miraculous stories is the God that walks with me daily. And my faith is strengthened. My, my relationship with him grows as I see him work those miraculous things in and through my own life. When we go through difficult times, when I need him for all kinds of things, it blows my mind. Um, my takeaway today comes from kind of just what I'm talking about. Like, this is the same God that walks with us daily. This is the Holy Spirit. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, and we choose to follow him and make him the boss of our life forever, we receive the Holy Spirit. We become this temple that we've been reading about all through the Old Testament. Our bodies become the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. He lives in us. And... I, I just love this last little section. It's called the Fellowship of the Believers in my Bible. They gave it a little title, and it starts in verse 42, and it tells how they live, how they survive in this world um, while trying to live for God, but also being surrounded by the world. Yeah. And it says, And they devoted themselves to the, to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. What I love is I'm thankful that I do see my life in that. I'm thankful that um, after salvation, this is what doing life in the upside down kingdom, as a part of the upside down kingdom in the world, what it should look like. We need each other. We were made for relationship with God and we were made for relationship with other. And not like just... A Sunday Wednesday relationship but a day by day texting each other prayer requests um, shooting a text to a friend saying hey I need prayer for specific things right now hey I have a question about what I read today um, how do you apply this to your life this is what's going on in my life how do I respond to this situation like a Christian and what I love is that this is the overflow of having the Spirit live inside of us. This is what our lives should look like. Uh, and I think as we walk with God more and more on this journey of sanctification, it should look like this more and more. And I'm so thankful that I do see this. I don't know, something so cool that I've recognized, mostly I guess through moving every now and then, we can meet strangers who are other followers of Christ. We can meet them. And sometimes there's just an instant connection with that per person, almost like, oh my goodness, you do feel like family. 
And the only thing that you have in common is that we have the same father. We have the same heavenly father leading and guiding us. But I think that's beautiful. That is a fellowship of believers because we have the same God indwelling us. And I think that's awesome. Yeah, I think it is too. So chapter two, uh, oddly enough, there's a lot that happens in this chapter. Um, but over the years, as I've taught this chapter, like the same questions keep coming up. And so I really don't have much to add to what you said, but I do want to address these two questions because they seem to be the ones that are most often asked. And so when the, when the story starts in chapter two, it says, now when the day of Pentecost had come, Pentecost means the 50th. So it's been 50 days since the feast of Passover, uh, and the feast of first fruits. That's why it's called Pentecost. And it says here, it says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come. So they had been celebrating Pentecost since the days of like the Leviticus and Numbers. They'd been doing this every year for 1,500 years. But only now did the day of Pentecost fully come. Why? Because it was always looking ahead to the birth of the church, the filling of the Holy Spirit. So, so Peter is going to quote Joel that we read a few days ago. And so this has all been setting up. So everybody who had been celebrating this all those years, they had been looking for it. Now this day is, is, is fully come to this moment. Uh, the thing that, that I get asked a lot about is when it talks about them speaking in tongues. And so it even lists a, a, a large number of people of, of like languages. It says in verse 9, Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those in dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontia, uh, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, parts of Libya, uh, Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors, visitors from Rome, Cretans, Arabs. And it says, we hear them speaking in their own tongues the wonderful works of God. Now, here's what you need to know. This moment in the book of Acts, like we, this is kind of the first time Christians start hearing about like the gift of tongues. Let me tell you what happened. So previously, the believers, the Christians who had assembled that day, uh, they, had, they had received the Holy Spirit. So the Bible says the Holy Spirit came on them like, like flaming uh, tongues, okay? And so here's what's happening. They're being given the ability to speak languages they had never heard before. Probably not all of them, but maybe this guy could now speak this language and he's never even studied it. This is how Galilean fishermen evangelized the world. And we get this idea that maybe one guy is preaching because we have Peter's sermon. But really what's happening here, it says we hear them speaking in our own tongues. All of these believers are sharing the gospel now in languages where Egyptians are gathered and Arabs are gathered. And they're gathering in their own little circles. I mean, don't you, when you go to church, often kind of sit together with your family, people that you're, you're tight with? Look, we At that festival, they would have been traveling in from all these areas and staying close-knit. And so now you got a believer who suddenly speaks their language coming up to them, speaking in their own language the gospel. This is this is not a this is not a, 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 a kind of gibberish. This is them speaking languages they had never studied before. And then the last thing comes in the last uh, the last the last portion of this chapter that you read, it, where they are all together uh, and they're share, they're selling everything and they're like they're giving money to those who need it. So I get a question about this. This is kind of odd. Like, is that is that the Christians practice communism? And so let me let me just kind of address that. So one side of this we read and you go, you know, it, it talks about they're they're all with one accord daily, all of them. You know, it uses the word all and every a lot in, in this. One of the interesting things to think about is was this day the last time ever? that all believers, all Christians were in the same spot at the same time in all of history. So, because right after this, remember, the, the, all the, these folks are going home. And as they're going home, because they're just in town for Pentecost. Mm -hmm. So as they're going home, now they're spreading and then they're sharing the gospel with people and they're getting saved who may not be Jewish, who may not be traveling back. This may be the only time in the history of the world all Christians have been together at the same spot. And here's, and the other side of that is, Imagine being in that place and you weren't planning on staying that long, so you didn't bring all your money with you, and so you're traveling from all these places, and maybe you got a need. You you kind of you, your money's running short because you're staying in Jerusalem. You don't want to leave this thing, this this new Christianity thing you're experiencing. You don't want to leave it too soon, and so these believers begin to share 
Listen, it's important to understand they shared not because they were forced. They shared because they cared. By the way, this is what we would look at as believers with benevolence and charity to, to give as, as has been given to us, to bless as we have been blessed. And really, this, this, that's, a, that's a discipline that continues. You'll see believers from this point on sacrificially giving in order to take care of others because of how much God has done for them. They want to be a blessing to others. Couple of, that's a couple of things we got from this chapter. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you tomorrow in chapter number three. All right, bye. Bye.